We've got the Warriors and Wizards, followed by the Timberwolves and Lakers. But before we get to our doubleheader, we've got an hour-long TNT NBA tip-off presented by Auto Trader, during which we will announce the starters for the All-Star Game in Charlotte. Ernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith, and Charles Barkley at your service tonight. Before we go any further, I want to join the chorus of all those who are sending their best to Victor Oladipo. Oh, this, oh, one of the most popular guys out there, just a great dude and, and such a talent in this league. And to be lost for the season now after what happened last night, it's a ruptured quad tendon, and he is out for the season. Ernie, number one, Victor, you know we love you. We love having you on the talent show. You're a hell of a player. I almost started crying last night, Ernie, because I knew what it was. That was the same injury that ended my career. Yep. And when I saw it, I said, he tore his quad. And uh, it's, it's awful for the Pacers. Uh, but, man, he's such a great kid and a great player. All our thoughts and prayers are with you, Victor. Wish you well, brother. Yeah, you know what? You know, it's, it's so unfortunate. You know, Victor is, like, like Charles, I'm going to reiterate, one of the good guys in the NBA. Uh, I've, I've known him since he'd gotten to the league. It, he's, it's pretty funny because he and his guys that he uh, associate with, uh, you know, Jay and all of his camp, when they're in L.A., it's like, where's the gym, Kenny? You got the keys to the gym? Open up. And we get to in the gym and just work out, you know, for the last couple of years and uh, coming to events and going to his things. So I'm just sick. I was sick last mm. night just hearing that, you know, and uh, knowing that it was possibly that injury after it came out with, you know, with Charles, which how serious it was with Charles, you know, just wishing you and his best. And his mom is great. The, the good Whole thing. The family's great. The good thing, it's the same injury that Tony Parker had. And he's a lot younger than Tony Parker. Tony Parker's playing very well. So that, that's encouraging. I was already going to retire, so it had no effect upon me. But call, I would call Tony Parker right away and say, hey, tell me how you did your rehab. Because Tony Parker's been playing very well this year. Yeah, he was, he was a young guy. He was hustling for ball. Freak injury. Uh, it happened. But, you know, the good thing is, you know, everyone's wishing him well. He's going to get the surgery, whatever. He's going to do rehab. And I believe he's going to come back even stronger. Yeah, prayers up for uh, Victor Oladipo from all of us here. Uh, as we get set to announce the All-Star starters, a brief explanation of how the voting works. Voting by you, the fans, counts 50%. Balloting by a media panel counts for 25%. And the final 25% comes from player ballots. When all of those numbers are put in a computer, it spits this out. This is 17 pages worth of names and numbers. And uh, at the top of the, you know, if you're the top three front court and top two back court in each conference, those are the 10 starters. If there was a tie in the weighted score, the fan vote is the tiebreaker, and that did come into play in the Western Conference. Here's the way it turned out. In the West, as we reveal the starters uh -oh, for the All-Star uh -oh. Game in Charlotte, we begin. This was the best the fans ever did. I have no LeBron, problems with anybody. Okay. LeBron James well, let's see. will be the captain on one side. He's tied with Kobe now with 15 All-Star Game starts, averaging 27 points, 8 rebounds, 7 assists on the year. Joining him along the front line, Kevin Durant. Ten straight All-Star appearances in this, his 12th season, averaging 28 points a game, which is number four in the league. All-Star game MVP in 2012, mm. four-time scoring champion, and two-time horse champion, 09 <laughs> and 10. Paul George is the other starter uh -oh. in the front court. He's played great all year. 27 points a game is number eight in the league. Career high in points, rebounds, and steals this year. He won a tiebreaker over Anthony Davis for oh. the starting spot in the Western Conference. Wow. We, go, we go to the backcourt. Steph Curry, sixth straight All-Star appearance. He's averaging 29 points a night, which is number three in the league. He's fifth in three-point percentage. They're 28 and eight when he plays, five and six when he doesn't, and he makes it look Steph effortless. And James Harden joins him in the backcourt. Seventh straight All-Star selection. I don't even know how much else you have to say about this guy. Oh, yeah, 61 last he night. He's the league in scoring. Yeah, 61 36. last night. He's fourth in assists. Yeah, 61 last 31 night. 31 games of at least 30, including 21 straight 30-point games. Derek yeah, 61 Rose, last night. Derek Rose and Russell Westbrook tied for third. Wow. Behind Steph Curry 
and James Harden. And so that Anthony Davis situation with Paul George well, was Paul George, no disrespect to Anthony Davis, but uh, Paul George deserved to be a starter. I, I saw, obviously, when we had to pick out our reserves, I saw both lists today. In my 30-some years in the NBA, I thought they, the fans and coaches and media got it perfect. Well, well, it, it, it's a combination of all three, so it's what I, not just one. So remember what, what, was just... The, what was the fan? Well, we're going to... The fans would have wanted it. We're going, to, we're going to reveal that right, right that's now. What, so so then here's, you know. here's, the way, here's the way the fans wanted it. The fans okay, wanted, see, they wanted James Doncic, Doncic and Bro. Kevin Durant. That, they didn't why. want Paul George or Anthony Davis starting. Oh, that don't make it starting. right. And Steph Curry and Derrick Rose were the fan choices okay. in their balloting. Now, on the media side, LeBron, Durant, and Anthony Davis with Harden and Curry. In fact, Harden ahead of Curry in the backcourt among the media and well, on the... He deserves that. And on the player ballot, James Durant and Davis, Curry and Harden in the backcourt. So actually, when you look at it, Paul George trailed in the player vote and he trailed in the media vote but the fan vote, that's where Anthony Davis was fifth, and that's what cost him a starting spot. Mm. Well, Paul George deserved to start, but I, I also have a problem with Damon Lillard. The players should have him higher than that. Damon well, Lillard's... Uh, hey, she, Damon, she, she, you see where the, your peers are thinking? When they come to Portland... <laughs> he, should, he should be higher than five. And, and you touched on James Harden. I mean, again, when you saw what happened... And, and what was the headline in the New York paper, Madison Square Harden? I yeah. mean, he went for 61 points last night. I mean, we understand that the Knicks aren't a very good basketball team. Well, that's an understatement. You know, but 61 points is 61 points. No question. There's, there's no way around it. And his ability to score in multiple ways, the last guy I've seen to do this is Kobe Bryant, to be able to score this easy. He is, he's the Kobe Bryant of this era, scoring at this kind of clip doing things I've, I haven't seen. And he's known for the three, and he went Shaq on this list last night. Damn, and Shaq. Of course, you know. He must have been yeah, pretty good yeah. in your oh, day. Yeah, yeah back in good. 2000 to have I'm going to have to go like back that. and look at some old videotapes. He went he went 5 for 20 last night. You know, he's known for the three ball. You know, he's very deadly behind the three ball. Went to the free throw line 20 times. But Kenny's right. He's very hard to stop. My only fear for him is he's doing a lot of scoring doing a lot. last month. Hopefully there's some he doesn't people get tired that are, in the postseason. There's, there's some people, Shaq, and you, Charles, you can kind of jump in on this. That's saying, oh, there's probably a bunch of guys in the league that could do what he's doing if they had that, that shot opportunity. I don't believe that. I only believe there's one or two guys that could get 50 consistently at this clip. Now, you guys were prolific scorers. If you had got the ball that much and, wanted, and you wanted, they needed you to do that much. Well, I, Could I, you I, score I, I, I at think, that clip? Because uh, I don't know if any, a lot of guys no, can do that no, as uh, being no, an NBA no, player. No, because, number one, he, James... Said yes or no? No. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Well, well I, th I think Steph Curry and KD are probably the only two guys because they would, those two would be the only two guys who are going to shoot that many threes. Right. But that would be the, the caveat. Like, I can't get 50 a night unless I made five to seven to ten threes. Right. Like, I can get 30 or 40, but... And he took 20 last night. Yeah. Right. I mean, so and he, he got the free throw line That's my times. point. Yeah. That's my point. And they're saying that, oh, this is... Oh, a lot of guys... No, a lot... Being a former NBA player, one, the fatigue of it, the mental preparation and everything that he does, a lot of guys can't do that. No. But can he they, maintain it? But can, can he, he maintain, maintain it? He's maintained it for a longer than I've ever seen. But I don't think you can win. Anyway. I don't think you can win like that. But I don't. Yeah, I don't know if you can win. But God, listen. It's amazing. Fifteen and everyone six. Everyone can't do 15 that. Fifteen and six over this twenty-one game stretch, and when he scored at least thirty points, are there? Aren't guys, there aren't ten guys in the NBA that could do that. And no, it's not ten. It's like less than five. No. Thank you. Rockets, Rockets number. I, Rockets saying. number five in the West. We will talk a bit later about uh, who we think should be the Western Conference Reserves. That comes a little bit later uh, in our show. Uh, let's get a little uh, Twitter action here. Oh, that's from the Timberwolves. Yeah, Derrick Rose coming close, but not quite close enough. He did win the tiebreaker over Westbrook for the number three spot, but you only got two spots in the backcourt for all-star starters. When we come back, we will announce the starters from the Eastern Conference. Keep it right here. <laughs> I vote on at NBA TV until vote, noon man? on did Friday. No, no. Hey, uh, yeah. Dad, give me a chance. I'm here doing the segment now. When do okay. you want me to vote? My bad. I don't have a device on me. <laughs> give me, a, give me okay. a chance. You don't have your phone. I'm sorry. No. After the segment, <laughs> I'll go and vote. Um, 
Who you got? This is, this is difficult because I think you run into the argument of what defines athleticism. Is it explosive, get off the floor, right. we're, ability? We're, we're here to overthink this. Exactly. Right. So we're going yeah. to take this to the deep end of the pool here. Right. But I got to be honest with you. As, as explosive as Russ is and as marvelous as LeBron's athleticism has been for so long, Giannis is the bit largest guy in this category in terms of a graceful athlete. Freakish, you might say. To me, well, yeah. he's been Freakish. called Freakish. something like that. But to me, a lot of it is about how, how efficient are you with the ball underneath you and with the game underneath you in terms of can you get up and down the floor at your size and dominate in all the different ways that he has shown us he can this year? When you're that height, when, you, when you're seven feet tall, basically, and 14 feet long from mm -hmm. fingertip to fingertip or whatever, you know, that to me connotates a certain type of athleticism that the average man can't muster. Sure. Russ, to me, is the most explosive by position in the entire league. You talk about a guy, a furious athleticism that can overwhelm people. LeBron is probably the most well-rounded, but the best and the one with the highest ceiling in this category to me is Giannis. I'm going to go with the old head in LeBron. And part of it is most athletic. I've never seen a guy in the 16th season this athletic that can still do the things that he does. And part of being a great athlete is your ability to utilize that athletic ability mm -hmm. with your mind. And I don't know that we've ever seen as good a combination of athletic prowess and intellectual understanding and capacity of how to play the game uh, as LeBron. So I, I, would, I would go with him in that category for that. Now, Giannis is freakish, as is Westbrook. But I just think, too, being a great athlete, we're in the business of winning. He's won the most. <laughs> That's know. absolutely true. <laughs> I, I think that does, because you can have all that ability in the world, but if you're not getting to a level where that athletic ability says you should get to, then that, to me, gets discounted a little bit. Well, to me, that gets into a different category of just no, great no, overall no, players, no, not just no. athlete, which is the question. But well, these are three the athletes. Table. These They're three all, athletes. There are three great athletes. To me, of the three at this moment in time, I'm going with Russell Westbrook, mm. who is as freakish as anybody in the league. Yes, and when is. you think of explosion, and that's often what people kind of default to when they think of athleticism, there's just nobody as explosive. That dunk last night at the end of the game mm. against Portland, that was absurd. And you saw people getting out of the way. This guy could have been an NFL safety. He could have been who knows what else. Maybe a defensive end. He yeah, pro small. sports, I mean, <laughs> strong safety. You, I mean, but, but that, to me, that's always been the, the dilemma about athleticism. Is it, Right. What is that? Yeah, yeah. what does right. it entail? Like, is the guy who will be the most versatile of these guys? Because I think right. LeBron would, clearly could have been a professional you know, several different Oh, sure. Guys. Lots you know, of things, yeah. So you think about that. But, man, could you imagine Giannis or Russell Westbrook playing mm. volleyball? You know, like, or playing another sport where they could use I can't go volleyball. Talents. They made that much money in it. <laughs> I don't think they would have went But they could have dominated. <laughs> I don't mean just how much money you could get. I mean, I'm just teasing. <laughs> but, I mean, you, you think about that, the versatility of your athleticism, and then instinctual athleticism. Like, LeBron, to me, is off the charts when it comes to athletic instincts. You know, I've, I don't remember a guy, maybe since Michael Jordan, being that instinctual with right. his athleticism in terms of timing and knowing how to, you know, make plays on both ends of the floor all over the court the way LeBron does. And if you want to include longevity, uh, yeah, reliability, I, he goes into that. I know he's hurt right now, but he goes into that, that category yeah, as well. That's yeah. always been one of my arguments for Kareem as the greatest of all time. Yep. Guy played into his 40s. He was yeah. unbelievable yeah. all that time. There's no question. And, and started. Right, vote on NBA TV again. Isaiah and those the old school guys will tell you they had him at the top of the scouting report deep into his 30s. Yeah. Crunch time coming up at 9 Eastern time. All the big finishes from a big Wednesday night.